Where are we going? Been a little bit since I made a video. Been a little bit since I made a video, but you know what? I think this is getting me. I always fuck this up. There we go. That's getting me now, I think. That clean the lens? Yeah, gotta clean the lens. Hang on. Yeah, that's good. Alrighty. He dug the outside. He's outside clouding in his water. Coffee's out there. Yeah, so. Had a bit going on. You know, quite a bit actually. You know, I won't say it's been one of the uh, worst days of my life, or, you know. You know, it's like that song, things can only get better, yeah, but the other way around, things can only get worse. So, you know, I've had the biggest fucking rock of my life. Now, I've had a, hang on, I'll put this light on. There you see that, all the faces. There, there we go, how's that? You doggy, put that down a bit. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'll lose my friend, my best friend, who knew me inside and out, and I knew him inside and out to a motorcycle accident. That really wasn't a motorcycle accident, but anyway. To see his business that he's left behind. The way uh, so-called family and friends and what they're doing and what we all knew they were anyway before he died, even he knew. And to uh, lose a friendship. So, I lost a friend. Then lost a friendship. Uh, within days of each other. So it started off where I had to go to the police station. That was on the Friday because of my mother's suicide, which was, you know, three years ago. And I've had enough of how the police were handling that and, and their promises of coming back to me and they never got back to me. I went down there and it was got sorted. And a senior officer came out and he um, apologised to me. And he said, yeah, you're right. He said... We should have done better. It shouldn't have been like this. He said, and he apologised. And he gave me his name and number. Because I didn't carry on and swear like a fucking idiot, like some people do. When problems hit, no, nope, I calmed down. I was, I, vent my, I let them know I was angry, upset. It's not that I got my way. I don't work like that. Just what I want. I wanted what I wanted it done because it just should be done. That's the way it is. Not my way. It's the right way. And I was right. And he, he bit. He and he said yeah. And he apologised. But I, did, I said I don't want the apology. I just said I just want this to not happen to anybody else. That have to go. No one should have to go through this. This treatment. It just should be just a, a, by now we should be, there just should be a, a, a menu on how it goes, a routine. And he spoke with you know that officer took he took he gave me a, an hour or so of his time just to talk. Um, and then yeah, so 
That was on the Friday. I was on the phone, you know, before I went to the police station and stuff with someone and I was upset and stuff. And, you know, was, I won't say I was venting, I knew what I was saying, but it was something I said was taken <coughs> out of context to what I said. Um, and because of that, um, yeah, I wasn't, um, yeah, so that, that, to that, that person I was on the phone with, that, so that friendship, that friendship's over. Um, which was a shock, actually, given our age. But anyway, we all have a life to live. And, you know, what, you know, you don't want, when you make friends and stuff, you don't want too much change or you don't want to bring on worry. I understand all of that, you know, but, yeah. So, yeah, so I ended, uh, friendship ended. I lost a friend, tragically. And, um, not as tragic, but still shocking. Um, lost a friendship. Um, and yeah, so, within days of each other, and then, about my mate's passing, what happened, and the lead up, and what, what I knew, and others knew, and what we shared, and everything, knew, and I received a message from a friend, um, telling me that um, a good friend that I trained and, and he worked with me for a long time and I trained him and showed him and everything about bouncing and just life and, and, and how to treat people and everything. Like he, We met on the job. Um, and I was to train him, and I trained him, and he worked with me, and um, he learned a lot. He learned a lot, and um, you know, he always said to people, he said, if it wasn't for Justin training me, and how to treat people, I just had to do, the, just had, how to do the job and everything. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't have, you know, be where he is today and learned a lot. And he always said that to people, you know, not just as a guard, just as a person, you know, Justin's a good person and stuff like that. You know, it's nice when people say that, you know, and then they, and then you actually see them and they're, they're taking your advice and they're acting on it and and learning from it, and that's how you do the job, and be aware of this and stuff like that. It's just like like any job, you know. Well, anyway, I had a friend call me regarding that person, and he's been diagnosed. He's been diagnosed. Been diagnosed with um. Highly aggressive. Stage three, um, coal, um, he's got cancer anyway, in the stomach. Yeah, highly aggressive cancer. He's got a wife. Two sons. Pancreatic cancer, actually. Stage three. 
highly aggressive. It is survivable, depending on how aggressive the cancer is and where it's gotten to. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's gotten it's it's gone. So yeah. So another friend. He's not dead though, but he's been diagnosed. And you know, things with me and Mary. Yeah. I just don't know anymore. I don't know anymore, you know, I don't know anymore. Like, I, I don't get up. I don't get up in the morning to think about hurting people or what I can do wrong by people. I always get up and want to have a good day. Do something good. Knowing full well something bad. Is, or something not good is going to happen that happens every day you know but to try and make sense of the bad things that happen to try and gain some knowledge or to make a bad thing good or learn from it to make it you know just for something but you know I don't know anymore I never took drugs in my life until later in life, and that wasn't because of recreation use or anything like that, it was just purely and simply, and, and the drug of choice I took was ice, and I, I hated that drug, I fucking hate it, it's a shit drug, it's shit, it's fucking shit, I took every other drug, other drug, cocaine, fucking MDNA, you know, but that was all once in the blue moon recreational type stuff, you know, as you saw by the photos I put up on Facebook, yeah, that was me, you know, Going to the gym and fucking big and strong and fucking fit and, you know, does that look like a drug user? Does that look like the mentality of a fucking junkie? To then just one day, I don't know. I actually don't know. My life was... With Mary was fucking great. It was just, you know. And within a day, an instant, it was an instant. But not quick, not a quick, not a quick. It was, it was painful, it was slow. It wasn't, it wasn't like, fuck, I'm, I'm taking drugs. No, I knew it was, it was that slow. I'm, I'm going to go and get some drugs. I can't take this anymore. And that pain of knowing what you're going to do and then taking it and then everything else, whether, you're, whether I was on drugs or not, out of my control, just kept on coming and coming and coming to have no one and literally I can say this I had no one no one no one and then that then my mother kills herself I tried to kill myself then my mother kills herself and I'll tell you all of these stories Because I'm trying to make sense of it. I want you to make sense of it. Of things in your life. And so I think, right, there's got to be other people in the world that are going through this. That have done nothing wrong, but everything's just fallen upon them. And no one's helping them. And we're all thinking the same thing, but there's got to be someone else out there going through this. Or someone's gotten through it. How did they get through it? I, I searched everywhere and I, I couldn't find anything. There was glimpses there and stuff, but there was nothing like this. So I dragged myself out of the hole and I make these videos and I admit to you taking drugs and I admit to you that I've, you know, I've done crime, you know, and, and stuff like that. But my type of crime I did was almost, if you want to call it like Batman, you know what I mean? 
I wasn't going around picking on innocent people anyway, but you know, nevertheless, yeah, it was fine. And I um, hung around with some shady characters and stuff, so I drew all of this. And I open up a bit. This every everything I'm doing right now, I am actually fighting with myself inside because this is not what I do. I, 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 not many people do this. I am breaking the mold of what I that my persona of a person doing this. And doing that, what I'm doing to help people and guide them with advice that I've, I, what I've been through and what I've seen and, and, other, and things like that. Because I, th I believe that I've lived a pretty full life. I've seen a lot of things, a, a lot, a lot. So I, if, I, if you've experienced a lot and seen a lot and had to do a lot with a lot of things, that, in my mind, that sort of makes you a credible person to have a, 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 a broad, broad, you know, understanding of most things and you can give some advice on because you've done a lot. You haven't just sat on the fucking couch. Or you haven't just fucking walked around in life and, walk, you know, worked in rough hotels, but you've never actually gotten to know the people in there. Nothing. You've, d you've done nothing. You haven't gone and experienced, done it full on. You've gone and been a, a fucking spectator at everything. Oh, yeah. No, I can't. I saw that. Yeah, I was there for that. No, yeah, well, you, you just looked at it. I played a part. An active role. I had a role. I've been affected, so I think I have. I, I I'm qualified to be able to give lessons on life or advice because of what I've done, what I've seen, who I've met, who I've helped, who I've stopped, whatever be the case. And to lose a friendship after after knowing and and everyone knowing that this is not me sort of makes you go fuck it this doesn't work i've opened myself up and it fucking hurt i opened myself up and doing that takes a lot of time to open up a lot of effort to tell you and put it on YouTube and tell you I took drugs and I did this and stuff. That that's a, that that's that, that's a lot of time thinking. And while I'm doing that, I'm putting time into that where I would, normally wouldn't. I'll be looking at other things. And it's taken time away from a lot of things. And I've lost a friend to a motorcycle, supposedly. Then my other friend is now diagnosed with stage three highly aggressive cancer. I lose a friendship. I'm unemployed. It's not that I don't want to work. I'm not asking people for money. You know, I've helped a lot of people get jobs and whatever else like that, you know. Put a word in somewhere to get them a job, that's all. Why can't I get that? Why can't anybody get that if they ask? If you're asking for help in regards to get a job or do you know someone, how wrong is that? What, what, would you rather me ask you for fucking ten thousand dollars? I'm asking if you can put look around for work for me, put in a good word. No, nothing, nothing. Everyone's too busy caring about themselves and their own fucking problems. And yeah, their problems, but I mean, so Oscar. And, um, yeah, so it's been a fucking shit, shit time. Mary and I aren't going too well, you know. Her family's got problems after her mum died, you know. You know, and, um, yeah. We're not going well, we're not going well at all, you know. We're not fighting or anything like that. It's just, I think, with everything that's happened. It's just, it, 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 it's, it's too much. It's too much. To be able to move on. It's 
too much. It's just too much. I don't hate Mary. I love Mary to death. But, um, you know, problems don't come around that if, because no one did nothing wrong. And, you know, and so, yeah. So Mary and I ain't going well. And while I say that, you know, I go, fucking hell, mate, you know, like, after all, I've, you know, I know I sit here, like, and I say that I've done this and I've done that. You know, well, I have fucking have. This is only a glimpse of my life you get on YouTube. A glimpse. Just a glimpse, a flick. It's not even a fucking a spark. And I read in the comments that, you know, you all love Mary and Mary's great. And Mary is great. And I love Mary too. She's fantastic. All right? But I always do put in there that, you know, Mary has made some mistakes. This is why I made these videos. You've got to work that out. If Mary's so great, well, why am I sitting here? Like this. Mary is great. But there has been some major issues. And when people don't talk or people don't, they don't want to change and stuff, you, you've just got to sort of go, what the fuck? Mary's a great person, but, you know. So. Oscar! So anyway, last night, Mary worked last night. I was home alone last night, you know. So that's how her relationship's going. She doesn't tell me, you know. She goes, oh, I'm working tonight. Okay. okay. I'll be back in the morning and I'm working tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Bloody hell. So last night I was home alone and I've got these um got this one um kid who I've been talking to through my comments on my channel. And um he's over in the States. And anyway, he tracked me down on um Facebook. Gave me his phone number and everything. Needed to talk, wanted to talk, wanted to talk. You know, wanted to talk anyway. So, I was on the couch last night about fucking one o'clock in the morning. Feeling like shit. Lost me, mate. Another one's been diagnosed with cancer. Lost a friendship. Just like cut, gone. Friendship's gone. Um... Mary and I aren't going good. I'm sitting here wondering what the fuck's going on. To be quite honest with you, yeah, yeah. You know, Suicide David, you know, he's he's not just back, he's, um yeah, we're talking. We're talking. So I don't take this video as like my last video or anything, but I'm just saying, yeah. I've done all the right things, I've come out of it and I'm talking about it and talking with people and to be met with this, nothing, at the end you did everything right, you get used along the way, you know, so-called friends only calling you for when they want things and that's it, otherwise they couldn't care, they don't call you. And you get mixed up in the moment and everything because you, you know you want to repair you want to tell your story you want to help people and stuff and to find out that it, again that you just it's just for nothing i know it's not for nothing i know i've helped a lot of people with my channel and they've said that and that's great and i'm very happy for them I'm happy that I was able to give some advice. I'm happy that you listened. But as for me, I don't know. 
as I say, age is a very important thing. People need to remember that. There's things you can do in life and restart again. There's things you can redo again and stuff, but it all gets limited on living your age and also your finances and stuff and also what you what your lifestyle or what's in your life that enables you to do that and how or what to be able to do that. I have a lot of people that say I can call them any time and talk and stuff, but it, it's just not talk anymore. Enough with the talking. I just want to do something. When people say, oh, we'll go and get a job gardening, I don't want to do gardening. I don't want to do that. I just want a job. Where I'm appreciated, I want to do something where I'm with people. And I, I, I did all that. I did get those jobs, dragging myself out of the hole. And I got fucked in the ass over it. And I did nothing wrong, just other people seized an opportunity. Just get used, chewed up and fucked off, and, you know. And as I just keep in mind what you hear, what you're hearing, what you're seeing in these videos are, is a, less than a spark of what's really going on. Glenn, you reckon, and when you lose that, so I have no one to talk to. Not even Mary. We don't talk. She doesn't want to talk about anything, how to resolve anything, how to get over something, how to move on, nothing, no. So anyway, I was on the phone and I saw this kid, saw this message, he wants to talk, so I messaged him back, and I said, how are you mate? He said, yeah, I'm just sad, I'm not happy, no, what's going on? Oh, there's a lot of things going on. Just feeling him out to and fro messages, right? And um, so what's going on? Oh, you know, are you working? No, I just got fired. I live alone. Feeling him out. Okay, right out. So then I just drop in, I go, can I ask how old you are? And he says, 21. I said, okay. And this is what I said. I said to him, I said this. I said, I'm not going to sit here and say, you've got no problems because of your age. Right, I'm not going to say that. And I, and I put that in writing. I've got it on my Facebook, so I'll take a photo of it and I'll show you. And this is what I said to him. I said, I'm not going to be this person that's going to sit here and say, mate, you're only 21, get over it, blah, 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 blah. No, what I said was is, right, I'm not going to say that the problems you've got at your age are no bigger problems than some anybody else's at any age right i said but you have to look at it like this right and have to agree and the facts are the facts and this is you have a lot a lot of time a lot of life ahead of you a lot of life ahead of you you're at an age where you can go and experience a lot of things in life now so they might be Confusing you with problems instead of opportunities or a, a look at life. I said to him, I said, so that's what I'm going to say there. I said, now what, what is really going on? What's the problem? And I said to him, are you drinking or are you taking anything? He comes back and he says, yeah, me, I've got a drinking problem and stuff. And given his age, and everything else like that. And I said to him this, I said, right. I said, I think I know, I think I can sort of see what's happened here, right? I said, you've started to drink years back. You've started to drink and enjoyed the drink, right? With friends and family. And those people around you weren't telling you that that's enough to drink and they've let you go, right? Not to say that they're responsible, but if they're there for you, they're there for you. And I said, and then you've forgotten to enjoy the drink, enjoy the drink, and now you just drink. And they've left you, and you're just drinking alone. 
would that be a bad if what's happened? And he said, yes. I said, okay, good. That's good that you can see that and admit that. And I said, now I'm going to say this. It's going to probably shock you. You did no wrong. You did no wrong. Not now. You've done no wrong. You know why? He knows the problem. He knows he's just drinking and he's not enjoying it. Right? And everything. And I said this to him. Right, good. I said, so now, let me ask you this. To stop your drinking, I'm not going to say stop. I said, how about you just only drink on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. That's it. Put rules on yourself. You know that's the problem, so now put, and you've recognised it, and what's happened, and where you are. He's gone, yeah, that's true, that's what's happened. He said, okay, right. I said, good, put rules on yourself. I said, because, let me just tell you this, you're 21. You've got, you want to get married, you want to have kids, and you want to be a good father. These are the facts now. Is it right? to drink in a marriage to where you're drunk and have kids in that environment and, ex and expect it all to be all right. And, you know, you're wondering why you're getting up, you're coming home and your missus is upset and you've got kids. It's because she's doing all the load. I'm talking about this on, on what he's going to, if he keeps it going. And you're wondering why it's not happy. Is it fair on her? that you're coming home drunk and everything else like that and, you know, all of this. I said, and what's it feel like when you um, come home four hours late to take the kids somewhere because you were out drinking? And, he's, and I said, and you know what? They're not stories. We've all heard those stories. We've seen them. We've been a part of them. We've seen it happen. So they're facts. And he said, that's right. And I said, good, good. I said, so now do this. I said, you need to find 90 minutes, 90 minutes to yourself, three, three times a week, maybe four times a week, 90 minutes, a solid 90 minutes, where you can hone all your energy into something, whether it be boxing, whether it be just exercise. And what I said to him, I said, right, so now you've admitted, you know all of this, you know the facts and there's everything else like that. And he's gone, yeah. I said, right, now I want you to do this. I want you to go and watch Rocky number one, Right? And as soon as you finish that watching that movie, I want you to watch another movie called Southpaw. And I said, and when you're finished, I'm not telling you to go and be a boxer. What I'm telling you is, is this. Re recognising it. Seeing it. That's what those movies would do. And I said, and then the friends that you make from now on, you eat with them. Don't drink. You eat. No drinking. And I said, and when you start to get better, don't you dare go and see those people that left you where you are now all are alone and don't go and hunt them. Just get on with your life. You're young enough to do that. You've got so much time ahead of you and you can do it. And you've done no wrong. You know why? Because you know why. That's why you've got, done no wrong now. That's what I did last night. I spoke to this kid. That's what I did. In the mood that I'm in. And I said, and I'll be back to you in three days to see where you're going with it. And he turns around to me and he says, right at the end, it, and then it started another conversation. He said, I have a child. I said, well, here you go. And get on with it. And he said to me, no one's ever spoke to me like that. They've all given me bullshit. And I said, yeah. I said, I don't. I'm not about, you know, talking and fucking in order to try this. If you know, you've got to know what you're doing is wrong. Or it's, it's out of control. It's not good. Not just for you, but the facts are there. And he said, why can't people just put it to you like that? And I said, because people are scared of the truth. People don't want to hear the fucking truth. Oh, they want to hear the truth. But they want to hear the truth their way. Eh? They want to hear it their way. 
They want to hear the truth where they're not to blame. They want to hear the truth where they're not fucking, they've done no wrong and you listen to me. That's a load of shit. They've done no wrong. All these, I'm going to tell you, mate. Right? And, that, and I said, you know what? As soon as you said to me, right, you drink. Like that, I knew instantly you already knew the problem and you've done no wrong. If you're doing something and you still can't see what you're doing is wrong, well, you're still doing wrong. <laughs> you're not recognising it, you don't know. He's still drinking and he knows it. And I said, you've done no wrong. He just doesn't know how to get out and no one's around there to help him. No one's there, they're bullshit. In 21, how do adults look at a young kid that's drinking? Fucking idiot, dickhead. No one stops. No one stops. I did last night. Now that's what I fucking did. And that's what I'm going through. And I'm still helping and I will help. Why can't people just do what they say they're going to do, you know, and if you're getting paid for it, do a good job, you know, no I'm an anara, no bullshit like that and stuff like that. Why? Why can't people just do that? Why can't you have a friendship or be in a relationship where your friend or your partner fucks up and you can really be upset with them because what they did was wrong? Or they're out of place. Pull them up. You love them. That's how well I've been told about love and friendship. If you fucking have a mate or someone you love and they're doing wrong and, and you don't do anything, that's not love. That's not love. You don't care. But when you say something and you action it and let them know, and show them what they've done wrong, what they've caused, and everything else, and how it's feeling, and what it's done. You're explaining it to them. It's because you care about them, even though they've done wrong. And so long as they're standing there listening, the more they stand there and listen, the less they're doing wrong. But these days, people, you tell them even though they've done wrong and they know they did wrong and you tell them off about it or you bring it up and they go, oh, and they crack their shits with you. Like you're doing wrong. I didn't do the wrong. You did the fucking wrong. I'm just pointing it out and affected me. Or affected others. Oh, I've got a lot to say, you know, and people have say, I've had people say, you know, your videos are a bit much and stuff like that. You know, let me tell you this. I opened up this channel, and I'll tell you all again. I did this channel to be real, to explain to people what I'm going through that might help someone else or what happens to me. I don't mention names or anything. I don't put anyone out there. So if you happen to be something like a part of something, not the problem, but just involved, right, that's an issue that I've seen that could have been better handled or what the outcome of it and how it happened or what you just do as a person for someone, whether you know them or not, and that, what's wrong in that? You know what's wrong? People don't want the truth. People don't want the truth, mate. They don't want the truth. You all want to be a part of something, but you don't want to be actioning. You just want to look upon it. You don't want to be involved in it. Just, you know? Bit like the spectators of the football game. So just imagine if everybody now turned around and went, you know what? I'm just not going to watch anymore. I'm going to actually be a part of it. And I'm going to start to do something because we can all do something. Like with me. I'm doing something. I'd love someone to open up a door for me to walk through so I can start work or do something. Right? You know? It might and fix. It might fix between Mary and I. It might, might, that might be the catalyst. I don't know. But even if it's not, at least it gets me up in another channel and and, and, uh, and confidence again. And I'm forging. A, you know, I, I'm 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 my own person again. At the moment, I'm nothing. Oscar. So. 
telling people that they don't fit in your life or looking at someone and going, nah. Or being someone's friend and still not doing anything to help them when you could just by, you know, other people. We all have networks that we can pull upon. And I think people forget that that's actually how a lot of us got where we've gotten because of friends and networking and, you know, favours here and there to get places. And, you know, when you're all nice and comfortable and you don't, you and you're happy, that's not, you know, I don't need to help. Well, that's wrong. You should never stop helping. So go get a pie and just appreciate the person who made the pie and the animal that died for it and fucking everything else like that, okay? And don't fucking choke on the fucking thing. Go get a pie.